So um, I'll start with the Psalms, the, the Psalms of the Vespers of, of tonight. Um, it says, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I'm a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Alleluia. Um, so here, it's just a reminder that God will hear our prayers and he will answer and not be silent. And the same theme of we're not of this world. And we start, when we start acting like we're not of the world, um, <clears throat> we will recognize that he hears us. Um, and um, we, we understand that also he will not be silent uh, to our prayers. We feel more connected to God and the family. Okay. The fork fell. Um, welcome. Okay. So, yeah, if you can kindly uh, mute yourselves just so that um, we can hear. Thank you. Um, but we still want to see your faces. <laughs> okay. So, um, the gospel itself, like we said, from, it was from Luke 18. And this is um, the chapter that comes immediately after Christ speaks about the end of the world. We're not going to talk about the second coming or anything like that. A lot of people think it's the second coming, uh, God forbid. But um, uh, Christian always should pray and not lose heart. Um, as it says here, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Um, after a few verses, he says, shall not God, so he gives the parable of the widow who seeks justice um, and she goes to the judge of the city and she's persistent enough to keep requesting. So he finally responds to her and does uh, what she needs because she didn't give up. Um, and then God, the Lord Christ, after that, explains this is just like the Christian who appeals to their savior. It said, shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. So this means that even though God doesn't respond um, immediately to our prayers, he hears. And because of our insistence or persistence or faithfulness um, that we learn to increase through this process, then he grants us our blessing. So he says, I, will he not avenge them? Um, speedily. So, uh, of course, here vengeance refers to the devil and the evil around us, um, but not necessarily to, to a, a person. Uh, usually that's the theme of when we, um, when we see this type of enemy, when we read about the enemy in, in scripture, it's, we don't use it to apply to someone we dislike. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, the, the, here, we'll just contemplate a little bit about these two parts before we um, go to the words of St. Anthony, to pray and to not lose heart. So St. Cyril of Alexandria in his commentary on this passage, he, he actually comments quite extensively on just this first verse. Um, and he says, um, now the paths would lead onward to to an incorrupt life who eagerly advance therein are indeed numerous, meaning there's many roads to God in the spiritual life. There's many different types of saints that we have, uh, whether they're martyrs and confessors or patriarchs or apologists, uh, those who um, leave everything and go into the desert and those who live um, normal lives but are very saintly. So um, St. Cyril says there's many different roads but he says, one which especially benefits those who practice it is prayer, meaning all the saints practice prayer. And he says, we must make diligent use of it. Um, for it is, I affirm, the duty of those who set apart their lives, Christians, for him um, and for his service, should not be sluggish um, in these prayers. Um, then he continues uh, by saying, nor again to consider it as a hard and laborious duty, but rather to rejoice. So sometimes we think of prayer as or a big responsibility and a big work and an undertaking. Um, but here he's saying, don't think of it that way. Think of it as, as something joyful because the, the free access that we're granted um, by God to, to speak to him. Um, so for example, he says, you know, or I was thinking, how hard is it for us to talk to someone um, powerful and important. Like if you want, we visited DC a while back um, and 
just to get to the White House. <laughs> we have to have background clearance for our entire family, which months in advance, <laughs> um, just to go into the, the, the downstairs of, of where he is. Um, and to, to speak to him, uh, probably, you know, close to impossible. Like you can call, email, send a letter, but chances are um, you're not going to get a response. And if you do get a response, it's not going to be from the president himself. Um, it, would, it would be some lower level staff member, um, but not with God. Um, with God, we have a direct open line, person to person, 24-7. Um, and it's we who limit our conversation with him. He's the one who's calling us. Um, and we don't pick up. Pick up. <clears throat> so this is what St. Cyril says here in the second bullet point. He says, for he would have us converse with him as sons with a father. Is this not then a privilege worthy of being valued by us most highly? So we have to consider this a great privilege and honor um, and a freedom, not, not a, a, a big undertaking that we don't want to do. It's not like a job, but it's a, it's a loving act that we do um, with our loving father. Okay. <clears throat> um, the second characteristic of this um, uh, first verse to pray and to not lose heart. So St. Anthony says, not in the letters that, that we're studying, but in the Philokalia reference, it says, the truly intelligent man or person pursues one sole objective to obey and conform to the God of all. With the single aim in view, he disciplines his soul. And whatever you may counter in the course of his life, he gives thanks to God for the compassion and depth of his providential ordering of all things. So um, <clears throat> the, what, if we have the kingdom of God and our savior, you know, as our sole objective, um, then we even give thanks in our difficulties. Like in these difficult times, um, there was one of the fathers in, in Egypt, uh, someone had sent me a link, um, he titled his series, you know, The Blessings of Corona. <laughs> uh, the Blessings of Corona. And, and it's an odd t title. But he was saying, yes, we have to give thanks to God in all things. And to see the goodness that comes, um, uh, uh, or the silver lining that, 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 that we see in, in our difficult times. Because it's, God is still with us. Um, then St. Anthony continues, it's absurd to be grateful to doctors who give us bitter and unpleasant medicines to cure our bodies, and yet to be ungrateful to God for what appears to us to be harsh, not grasping that all we encounter is for our benefit and in accordance with his providence. So he's saying, we hate the medicine that we take. It, it, it doesn't taste nice, but we're grateful to the doctors who give it to us. Um, and so when we go through bitter times in our life, we should still be grateful because there is still good that is happening through it, or at least in us um, because of it. Um, it says, for knowledge of God and faith in him is the salvation and perfection of the soul. So I just thought those, um, uh, those words were kind of very applicable um, to, to these times. Um, one last thing before we move on to um, a different topic. Um, in the, his last letter, St. Saint, uh, Saint Anthony writes, therefore children, let us neither faint nor deem that the time is long or that we're doing something great for the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, nor let us think as we look at the world that we have renounced anything of much consequence for the whole earth is very small compared with all of heaven. Just like uh, our small time in this world is nothing compared to eternity. Um, and he continues by saying, if by chance we were lords of the whole earth and gave it all up, it could not compare with the kingdom of heaven. So we're put, putting things in perspective. Uh, for as if a man should despise a copper drachma to gain a hundred drachmas of gold, uh, so if a man were lord of all the earth and were to announce it. So just giving up the things of this world it seems like a big task, but it's nothing compared to what we gain in the kingdom of heaven. Um, okay, so um, the topic I wanted to discuss today is um, not really discussed that often because as we'll see, the, it's misunderstood. Um, even when we use this term in the Orthodox Church, other Christians accuse us of heresy because their misunderstanding 
of what we mean by the word. Um, but going on along the lines of what we just said about how, not, how we should not lose heart, um, how do we fill our hearts with faith, hope, love, and strength that, that God asks from us um, or that we get from God? Um, and there's a book that uh, I like the title of it. It's called God's Fullness, Our Emptiness. Um, but ironically, though, um, when we fill our emptiness with God's fullness, um, God is always full, but yet he still empties himself. Um, and <clears throat> when we're empty, we can't give to anybody. But when God empties himself, um, we are filled and he remains full. We'll explain this a little bit um, as we continue. But this term is called kenosis um, in the Orthodox Church. Um, and like I said, it's misunderstood. But what we Orthodox mean when we talk about this emptying of God in Orthodox theology, it means um, to give of oneself simply, um, to humble oneself. But when it comes to Christ, he humbled himself when he took the form of a servant, as St. Paul says. Um, and uh, he, he, didn't, he did not consider equality, um, robbery, to be equal with God. Um, as we say in the, or we pray in the liturgy of uh, St. Gregory. Um, but other people, when they hear this word, they think this means when he emptied his divinity, or we, he, he gave up his divinity, um, or lost his divine attributes. Of course, as Christians, we say, he all, he, even though he took the form of man, he still remained God, and fully God. Um, so that's just something that we have to clarify. Um, I don't want anyone to think, oh, open the, David came and spoke to us about how God, Christ gave up his Godhead when he took the form of man. No, <laughs> that's not what we mean, and that's not what St. Paul means. when. So this is the main reference um, that St. Anthony refers to several times in his um, letters, um, and that most theologians, when, when we look at the cross, when we look at the sacrifice of Christ, when we look at how... Um, his love compelled him to to deal with us, his children. Um, this is the perfect um, reference. Um, and uh, here, um, this is the most popular reference when it comes to kenosis. Um, and Saint Anthony, um, as well, talks about it in more in depth in his second letter. He quotes the same verses, but he says, he being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but emptied himself. Here's the, where they get the word kenosis in the Greek, taking the form of a servant man and becoming obedient to the point of death, obedient to God the Father, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God the Father has also highly exalted him, Christ, and given him the name which is above every name, that of the name Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, those of heaven, those in earth, and those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, um, this is the summary of what we mean by the emptying of Christ, taking the form of a, a servant. Um, and not only did uh, the Lord Jesus Christ um, do this for us, but he encourages us to take the same spirit in our spiritual life. So um, how does St. Anthony use this? He actually refers to it many times in um, his letters. Um, and this is just kind of like a, a breakdown of, we said the first letter was, was kind of unique in its own. But when we look at the rest of his letters, um, it follows a similar pattern. M many theologians and scholars do the same thing with, for example, like St. Paul um, and his writings or the Gospels, and they break down things by theme. So if you want to study, and even the Orthodox Church teaches us this, when, when we study certain things, we don't typically just go verse by verse and that's it. But, but um, more importantly, we go theme by theme. If you look at the theme of, of the, the weeks or the Sundays or the days of the Lent or the Passion Week, we extrapolate um, all the verses from scripture that line up with the same theme and the church says, this is the meal for today. 
So in a sense, this is what we kind of try to do um, when, when we want to fully understand a subject and see what the scripture is or what someone is, is trying to tell us from this. So um, St. Anthony talks about the kenosis of Christ a lot. Um, and again, almost every one of these letters, um, with the exception of the fourth letter, which we spoke of last uh, Sunday, um, which was a, a different theme on its own relating to, um, like we said, the repentance and knowing yourself and knowing God. Um, but here um, we see that when we're trying to grow in the grace of God and to understand him, we need to also understand his uh, emptying of himself. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of uh, take bits and pieces of all of these um, letters, God willing, just to uh, fully immerse ourselves in, in what, what this means, especially since, you know, Good Friday and the Passion Week is coming and we're in the theme of the, the, the Great Lent, which, the, again, em the theme of emptying is, is pretty, um, <laughs> lines up with it. So um, in order for us to be full, so oh, there's four points, um, F-I-L-L, -L, um, but these are the grace of God that we receive when he emptied himself, right? Um, and this, again, is according to um, the writings uh, of St. Anthony. So in his second letter, um, he says, Brethren, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would understand this great dispensation. This is another translation of the word kenosis, um, that he was made like us, apart from sin, of course as St. Paul says, and each of the rational beings for whom principally the Savior came, should, which is us, he, we should examine our way of life and know ourself and discern between evil and good so that Christ may set us free by his second coming. So this, this phrase, being set free, is repeated often, especially when he talks about kenosis. So the whole purpose of Christ. Uh, emptying himself so that we could be set free, set free from sin, set free from death, set free from the limitations of, of the weakness of our flesh so that we could be more Christ-like and more like him. Okay, um, that's the first point. The second one is, is I, I put innocent, um, but I think a, a better uh, phrase would be to be um, free from sin. Um, or, or as St. Anthony says at the end here of this uh, reference, that he destroyed all of our vices, all of our weaknesses, all of our uh, temptations. He says, now therefore it is right that we should also set ourselves free by his coming, that by his foolishness he may make us wise, and by his poverty he may enrich us, and by his weakness he may strengthen us, and resurrect us all, destroying him who had the power of death. Um, and we see this uh, constant um, emptying of Christ and the filling of man. Um, and and St. Saint, Saint Paul, re again, refers to St. Sorry, St. Anthony refers to St. Paul, especially in the Second Corinthians, where, where we see this, um, this, this balancing. Um, and then he says, then we should also cease to call upon Jesus for our bodily needs. We'll seek the kingdom of heaven and all things there. Uh, and, and, and all things will be granted to us after that. Um, he says, uh, the coming of Christ, the advent of Jesus, helps us to do what is good until we have destroyed all our vices. So the, the purpose is to free ourselves from sin. Um, and he also continues here by saying, um, uh, keep back your servant from presumption sins. Uh, sorry, this is in the Psalms. Um, uh, let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Um, so um, the power of the Holy Spirit grants us the freedom from sin through the sacrifice of Christ. Um, if we are uh, keen to recognize how much he emptied himself for our sake. and uh, again, for our sake, meaning that there is a benefit for us um, in his suffering and in his sacrifice. Um, then St. Anthony continues uh, by saying, um, my children, you know uh, the grace uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, but 
that we through his poverty might become rich. Again, this seems like St. Anthony <laughs> repeats a lot in, in the various letters, sometimes the same wording, the same references, um, not because he didn't have enough material, but because this was consuming his thoughts at all time. And this was um, essential in his mind for, for the one who was trying to, to grow in Christ. He says, through his submission, he made us free. And through his weakness, he has strengthened us. And through his foolishness, he has made us wise. And through his death, he brings to pass our resurrection. Therefore, if anyone is Christ, he is a new creation. So again, this is a, a reference from St. Paul's epistle. Um, and so it's not just about being free from sin or free from death or free from the devil, but to give us a new life. Um, and to not that new life is not just when we leave this body, but now. Um, and the, the only way we can experience this is by contemplation and, and by the act of, of Christ's sacrifice. Okay, the last point is, is love. Um, as St. Paul, St. Anthony says in his sixth letter, he says, while we're still clothed in this heavy body, let us magnify God in ourselves by stirring each other up and deliver our souls to death for our, sorry, de deliver ourselves to death for our souls and for one another. So basically he's saying here, just like Christ gave himself up for us, we have to do, in a sense, this for, for one another. Um, maybe not physically, but at least we tire ourselves for one another in service and um, in sacrifice. Um, he says, and if we do this, we, call, uh, we can manifest the essence of his compassion for us. Um, let us not be lovers of ourselves. He who knows himself and knows all men. Again, the same theme as what we were talking about last week, knowing yourself, knowing God, loving God, is, is and loving others. Um, he says, he who loves his neighbor loves God, and he who loves God loves his own soul. Um, and so uh, he actually continues by saying, therefore the father of all creation moved with compassion towards our wound, which could not be healed. But by the goodness of the father, he sent forth to us his only begotten son. Um, uh, so he said, therefore we should want, love one another warmly, as he says, um, and he says the same thing for he who loves God loves his own soul. Um, okay. Um, so just to summarize, um, using the words of St. Anthony, he says, um, therefore Jesus emptied himself of his glory and took upon himself the form of a servant, Philippians 2, that his bondage might make us free. We had become foolish and in our foolishness committed every kind of evil, but he again took the form of foolishness, the form of man, that through his foolishness he might make us wise. Um, this is a, a, a wordplay or an indirect reference to Romans. Um, so of course, Christ is not foolish, <laughs> but because he took our form, that's why St. Anthony uses this, the form of foolishness, so we can understand what St. Paul means by this. He says, and when he had become poor, because he became man, in our poverty lacked all virtue. So again, he took the form of poverty that through his poverty, he might make us rich in all wisdom and on all understanding. Um, so again, uh, it reminds me of uh, the, the Father Bishoy Kemal of blessed memory, who um, when he was suffering in the flesh because of sickness on, on his bed, he insisted that he had the, an icon or a picture of Christ um, above his bed. Um, and he took, and I think he wrote by hand um, on a piece of paper, he wrote for my sake um, in Arabic, of course. Um, and he put it right under there just to remind him like this, this is my focus that he, Christ did this, but he did it for my sake. Um, and if you look in the, the, the liturgy of St. Gregory, um, there's a, a long passage where St. Gregory keeps repeating, for my sake, you have uh, bound the sea. For my sake, you have manifested the, the greatness of your care for me. For my, so when we kind of remind ourselves of how many things God did for our sake and, and remind us of how much he loves us, then we have the spirit granted to us from him by his grace to, to do this thing also for others. And, and 
for even for our own salvation sake. Um, then he says, uh, therefore, not only this, but he even took upon himself the form, it should be form of our weakness, that through his weakness he might make us strong. And he became obedient. Again, uh, Philippians 2. Um, and so the last bullet, he says, if indeed we set ourselves free through his coming, we shall be found disciples of Jesus. So the real disciple is the one who is set free through his coming. And being set free through his coming again, is by reminding us ourselves of his emptying. Um, <clears throat> finally, um, we, he, he says, okay, Christ died for us as well, but what about everyone in the Old Testament? Everything that happened, in a sense, in the Old Testament, it was also for our sake, as he says here. Um, now then, what shall we answer him in the day of judgment? Or what good is lacking from him that he has not done for us? Not just in the New Testament, but also in the Old. He says, uh, didn't the patriarchs suffer us? Didn't the priests teach us? Didn't the judges and kings fight for us? Didn't the prophets die for us? So basically he's saying, everything in the Old Testament, that's for us. <laughs> or weren't the apostles persecuted for us? Or didn't his beloved son uh, die for us all? Um, so again, this is from the, the seventh letter, actually. Um, and um, this is just a summary of, of the points that we were talking about. Um, but like we said, Okay, how can we fill, how can we do this for others if we're not um, receive it first? How can we fill um, others if we're not full first, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, God in his, so like for example, if I have a bucket of water and, and I want to give um, some of that bucket to someone else, I have to do what? <laughs> Simply, you know, pour some out, right? Um, but if I'm not constantly being filled with that, um, I'll be empty. Um, that's what we, we kind of remind ourselves in the service all the time. You can't give unless you're full. Um, and so I, I thought of an interesting example of how um, um the Lord Christ, like, because when we're saying, okay, if something is being emptied constantly, then there's there should come a point in time where it's empty. Um, but again, not with Christ. And it shouldn't also happen with the servant. Um, so this is a, a limited example. But um, I was saying, okay, each one of us as empty buckets, we stand under the cross to be filled with, with Christ, right? With his, um, uh, the, the side that was uh, opened for our sake to grant us his grace, right? <clears throat> I was noticing in one of the icons um, that usually we say blood and water float out, but this one, they put gold um, uh, as a reminder that this, th this is the grace that we grant, we're granted from him. Um, so when you pierce the bucket, it's able to give, but it's also able to be filled as well. So <laughs> this is just um, contemplation here, of course. But we say the persecutions, the tribulations, the suffering of the servant um, creates more holes in the bucket, right? But these holes are means by which others can be filled as well. Um, as long as we're constantly being filled with the Spirit and being filled with Christ and uh, depending on the, the, the sacraments and being filled with His goodness, then we can give as, as much as we can. We're just a vessel. Um, so I thought this kind of helped us understand where we're full and we're uh, filling others. Just like, or not the same level, but just like God is always filling us um, and he's always full. Um, him by his nature, but we by his grace. Uh, finally, <clears throat> I just, like I referred to in the past of, of the, uh, the liturgy of, the, of St. Gregory, um, I was just um, showing here how a small par paragraph uh, refers to his, empty, his emptiness and our fullness. Okay, um, like we say, you, O oh my master, have turned for me the punishment, uh, the punishment of the cross, the punishment of sin, the punishment of death, into salvation by your death. 
you are he who ministered salvation to me when I disobeyed your law. I deserve death. Um, I, I, I broke the law, but you granted me salvation. You emptied yourself, took the form of, again, Philippians 2, and blessed my nature in yourself. Um, you fulfilled the law on my behalf because I disobeyed your law. Um, you borne the oppression of the wicked. You've given your back to the scourge. So this is the same. Uh, a lot of uh, priests like to pray this part of the liturgy of St. Gregory, especially on Holy Thursday, because it, it describes the sacrifice of, of the Savior. Um, for my sake, oh, my master, you have not hidden your face from the shameless bit. Um, okay, <clears throat> so um, this was just, um, I know it wasn't as in line with um, the other Sunday Gospels as much as we could, which is why we added the contemplation in the beginning. But I think by now we're able to, to see um, we're able to see a little bit more clearly the heart and the mind of St. Anthony and how it was completely uh, locked in on the love of Christ, on the, um, the kingdom of heaven, and on um, the love and grace that we receive from, from God and how um, his uh, to fill us. Uh,